let me give you a couple numbers for example. There are about 1,000 to 1,500 international only real estate technology companies that play or dabble in the United States. There's about 1,000 pre-revenue companies of real estate technology companies in the United States. We've got about 1,000 early stage companies and we have about 2,000 established real estate technology companies. That's 5,000 real estate technology companies that I'm sure if you guys do the math and you take a little bit of time to think about that, the top 1,000 brokers, many of you in this room, a lot of friends that I see, probably get hit by about four to five emails a day from these real estate technology companies. So the challenge that we're gonna address and how do we navigate, how do we find, fix, and fire our technology and put the right pieces in place is going to be the premise of the, the, the topic of conversation today. We got an excellent panel. Some people I've worked with very closely, some tech companies, and uh, I, I, I love the, the insight that we're gonna bring you guys today. So first, quick show of hands, how many of you actually do see at least one or two real estate technology company uh, reaching out to you per day uh, uh, via email? I think it's, yeah. How about four or five? Okay. So it, it's, it's quite a bit. This is a challenge that we see. And frankly, for Vance, too, and the property-based team, it's like, how do we cut through that noise? How do we prove that we're enterprise-grade technology solutions? And so those are some of the things that we're going to address. So we're going to give you guys some fun takeaways, too, so you can go home and actually do some homework yourself to figure out what you're doing in your tech stack and how you're competing. So the first question is going to go to Megan uh, with Maybaum. And uh, Megan, take us through how you position, how you find and make choices on your tech stack for your firm. Yeah, so I think um, when we talked about that question last week, it, it was brought up on the conversation, but it's a two-prong approach. Um, so you have to think about technology that really is going to help your company grow and then technology that's going to help your agents grow. Sometimes they both work together, but on the company side, you know, you think about things like Skyslope and Lone Wolf, things that are going to help your uh, staff be more efficient. Um, on the agent side, it's a little bit more tricky. Obviously, the, the budget is a little bit higher for things like that, but the ROI for us isn't necessarily um, just what tech company is going to help their bottom line, but it's what training we can provide, what customer service, you know, the company provides. So we launched with Property Base last June, um, and the big decision factor for us on switching to a platform with the CRM was being able to really champion that I think disruption, you know, with so many companies approaching us um, for CRMs and, and, you know, any kind of form um, is what kind of training they can provide us so that we can train the trainer. And then also um, kind of the rollout system. So the great thing that we had with the website was they kind of helped us set up, you know, instead of just full Monty, here's drip campaigns, here's, here's how to use it, it's let's get your database in. Um, so we had a conversation earlier about really bringing on um, student you know, intern type people so that our top producing agents, you know, would adopt it if it was already in the system for them. Um, but then from a perspective of budgets and trying to decide, you know, which company to go with, um, really just reallocating some of those funds. I mean, not necessarily just print, but really saving and making sure that you have the money to go with the company that fits the best mold for you instead of just what's the cheapest, easiest. Um, that. Great. Okay. Uh, pass it to Tom. Tom, how do you guys choose your tech stack? Um, well, um, so we choose our, we go about it, you know, in somewhat of a similar way. Um, we come to conferences, see what's got out there. Uh, we have advisory groups with our agents, listen to what they are thinking, what challenges they're facing. Um, but then we get together as a leadership group and really discuss um, what we think is going to be the most important next thing to implement in the company and try to take it from there. Because I think as most people who experience, the agents don't always really know what is the next thing they need um, to help them in their business. So we, of course, want to take that perspective into account, but eventually it's coming down to the leadership team and how we can prioritize and what we think we can realistically put in place. Um, we had a little bit of catching up to do, and I think I'll talk about that a little bit later. So we, um, I, we had to get some fundamentals in place, really, uh, before we could start to get to, I think, some of the more innovative technology that's out there. But that has helped us get ourselves a strong foundation to go off of. Great. How about you, Al? You, you talked about all those people reaching out to us. Yeah. Weren't the last two weeks like the hype to the Super Bowl? <laughs> it was like 40, 50 a week. This is literally yeah. the Super Bowl for many real estate um, technology companies. But the, yeah. the, the first thing that I usually ask if I actually engage, a lot of times it's, it's just, you know, a lot of, a lot of stuff coming at us. Um, you know, what other leading RE companies do you work with? 
And then because of coming to conferences like this and getting to know people in the network, we have an opportunity to say, oh, well, that company is someone, I know somebody there, I know what they're doing, and kind of go on and look um, at what they're doing, whatever it is. Uh, did, can it make us more money? <laughs> can we save some money by implementing the technology? Uh, and then as far as bringing it in, we, we really try to give our agents a little peek into it usually and test it out. Uh, we've done that with a few things. It's worked. We've done it with a few things and, and they didn't really like it. So we kind of moved on. So um, there's a variety of ways, but uh, you know, basically it's relying on people who are already using it and, and mostly from this, this organization. Great. Lastly, Sarah, last but not least, you're in a very tech innovative market. So it's probably even exponential in your case. How do you cut through the noise when you are in a tech bubble too? And, and how do you make sure that you're making the right decisions? Right. Well, I know when Megan alluded to, you know, not just company technology, but agent driven versus broker side, um, a lot of it is just really listening to the top producers at your firm, the leadership you have in place. Um, I feel like technology has helped between webinars and you know, you're able to kick the tires a little bit easier on a lot of different platforms. Um, I do rely heavily on leading RE, luxury portfolio, or organizations where there are much larger firms doing kind of the big nuts and bolts research of things um, that have maybe gone through some of those changes. Um, and I can pl you know, kind of plug their brains and kind of figure out what have they done that's worked well, what have they done that's worked terrible, and then you kind of learn from each other's uh, kind of ebb and flow of technology. But there's just a lot of noise. Um, and I think I find if you run it through your company culture and what platforms are out there that work really well with your existing structure, you don't want to add something that's going to be another login at a some website that doesn't really jive well with the other uh, things you currently have um, to make sure that environment uh, really is seamless and easy to use because we all have agents at different levels. Good. Vance is our token CEO. He doesn't get to talk. Can I add one thing to oh. Just kidding, Vance. <laughs> there's one nope. question so. that I would ask. <laughs> there's one question I would ask anybody that's that's got a technology you want to know about is what's the service like after the sale? Because um, and that's the and I get I get a lot of questions from other people about the things we run, and I that's one of the things I always tell them because we don't want to work with someone that's going to disappear after the sale. And the people we use, we're friends with. We we created friendships or or uh, relationships with them at things like this, and then that carries over as we work with them, partner with them. You can hold on to that. So, so hey, Travis, for you bomb another question on me. Sure. Uh, so I'm, I'm the provider of technology, as most people in this room know. Um, so a couple comments. One, uh, so I'm new to real estate. I'm a whopping 13 months in, so you can take whatever I say with a grain of salt. Uh, but I, what I will say is, come, having done you know, analytics and software companies prior to this, I, it was kind of eye-opening coming into the real estate space. One, you know, selling enterprise software, it's very criteria driven. Like, hey, what is it that you're gonna provide? Let's rank it, let's stack it up against the other providers. And so what I've been trying to do, encourage our team is just help companies that we work with say, hey, what is important to us? And, and how do the vendors stack up to make sure you're actually getting, and relationship is a big part of it, it's services, uh, as well as the technology itself. I'd say that's one thing uh, just to suggest. The second thing I'd suggest is, the more I, I look at it, like I think we have to start looking at our agents in different persona categories, right? And a lot of them I see there's like two or three personas, super power team, power user, all the way down to somebody who does almost no transactions, but they're on the roster, right? And there's somebody in the middle that really wants to get into real estate and figure it out. And I'll, my wife has been in for two years and I'll put her in the middle category. She's trying to figure it out and that's how I ended up here. Um, you know, look at those personas and figure out, hey, what, talk to those people and figure out what is important to get to each of those personas and figure out, can I get a flavor of that for each of those personas? Because I think in the next five years, 10 years, it's going to be much bigger uh, at higher importance because you have a lot more tech. You have people who grew up on Facebook. I mean, it's going to change a lot in the industry. Good. Well, I, oh, okay, I'll hold. One of the next things, we wanted to provide you guys with a takeaway. We put a lot of research into this. Actually, Vance alluded to something there that we see a lot. We get a lot of requests for competitive analysis, and brokers just asking us, what does the technology landscape look like? I see all of these things, but what categories are these people in and stuff like that? So we've sat down with Vance's team. We've sat down with a lot of brokers, and some many in the room here, to map out where they see their technology and, and put a strategy behind it. So stop walking into a conference and grabbing the next shiny penny and think it's going to solve your problems when you're at an innovation crossroads. Rather, put some thought 
and strategy behind it. So that's what we've given you guys today uh, on courtesy of Property Bases. You're gonna get chapter three of our Swanepoel Trends Report, which is an 80 plus uh, category map for you guys to say, what am I doing in these 80 plus categories from a technology perspective? Um, you're also gonna get a real-time technology assessment. Um, how do you guys stack up? So two really cool takeaways. I uh, don't wanna give you guys homework, but I wanted to give you some value. But this leads, leads really well into our next uh, question uh, for, for Vance. You know, brokerage technology with 5,000 of them being mapped across 80 plus categories, uh, how do you, Vance, from a, you know, from, a, from a technology perspective, how do you make sure that you're providing the right stuff to the right brokers at the right time? You just made an acquisition of bold leads. There's obviously a reason you did that, uh, bolstering your top of the funnel technology. And so uh, how do you guys go about approaching you know, acquisitions and making sure you're providing the right tools for your brokerages? Yeah, no, thanks, Travis. Um, <clears throat> so a couple things. When I when I first got here, I just wanted to understand, like, what are all the capabilities? Going back to the capabilities concept, what are the features and functions that are really going to drive value for brokerages and these agents? Um, and you know, one, of, one of the key things that I learned was, you know, there are certain things that brokers are willing to pay for, and there are certain things that agents are willing to pay for, and there are different priorities of those things. And, you know, from my standpoint, there's like, two things to really think about. You know, data is going to drive a lot of decisions today and in the future. Obviously, real estate is a very local business, but just to have the opportunity to have an at-bat, you know, to use a baseball analogy, with that friend in town, you know, what is that? Like 86% of people say they'll work with their agent again and only 12% do. Like, you have to be front and center, and the best way today to do that is to figure out how to use technology to stay top of mind to that person. So data is driving that. I think you know the second thing, the way we think about it is what are the tools that are gonna help take that person who doesn't know who you are at the top of the funnel and get them to a commission, right? And get them to you know the bottom of the funnel. And our view as a company is we need to have a piece of every one of those stacks, uh, every, every piece of that stack, but we have to make sure that all of those pieces integrate, right? So we're not gonna force a technology, uh, the whole stack down somebody's throat. We believe over time being an independent provider of, of that entire stack is gonna add a lot of value because we'll be able to you know, do cross marketing we, when we learn more behavioral thing from Facebook. We know, oh, this email campaign may work better. Um, having that data and that integration is valuable, but you know, make sure your vendors like, don't force everything on you. Like, best of breed and integration is important as well. Good. So this is the 80 plus categories that Vance uh, and I kind of worked on together and we've uh, kind of helped map a lot of their technologies on this. Uh, Property Base checks a lot of these boxes, not in a very standard way, but in a, in a powerful technology way. Um, really quick kind of rapid fire question. This is a little wild card, wild card for you guys, but how many technologies do you actually use in your brokerage? 5, 10, 15. Megan, why don't you just go across? 5, 10, 15. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all could have started it down there. Ah, uh, yeah, my bad. Yeah. yeah, 5, 10, 15. I mean, probably more like a dozen, I would okay. say. And I would say about 50% of them talk to each other, and the other 50% is just a mess. Gotcha. Great. Yeah, I think we're probably in that ballpark, although... Um, since we've more or less gotten our foundation figured out, you know, thanks to property base, uh, we're starting to add more on. And yeah, them talking to each other is a, always a, a big uh, filter for us when we're adding new technology because we find most agents can't remember one sign on. So sure. we're not going to have five of them. Uh, I have to say it's in double digits, but I, I don't know the number. The, the one thing that I have been doing this a while now, um, there's no perfect solution. And again, when people call and ask me questions about that, I say, you know, I know that everybody wants to invent this thing that's going to have everything in it. It's a dashboard and all this. There's some really good stuff out there that's not going to plug in, but you have to use it because yeah. it's still good. A great example for you is like you use Skyslope and, and property right. base owns back agent. So there's some yeah. overlap there. And prior to Boston Logic, they had a transaction thing, but Skyslope was, was good for us and it's really worked. And it, it doesn't talk to even our accounting software without paying thousands of dollars, which we're not going to do. So, but it still works really well. Correct. Okay. Yeah. I would say dozens. And some of those are really user interactive and agents that are heavily involved in technology. And then we have several that you can sign up for with the company and it's cruise control and we do it for you. So it's just a matter of kind of navigating 
all those tools. Great. So dozens across the board, pretty unanimous question. Let's go to Tom. Uh, so Tom, how do you manage dozens from a resourcing personnel budget? Uh, why is it important to the culture of your firm to use technology? Uh, take us through your history too, because I think that's important. Okay. Jump in there. Yeah, I was reading the title, uh, What's Missing from Your Tech Stack before and kind of thinking, okay, what's missing from our tech stack? And uh, it kind of hit me that's not so much anymore, but what was, so I, uh, I'm, I'm the owner of a third generation brokerage, 76 years old. Uh, I came back to the business five years ago and bought it two years ago. So when I came back, I would say really what was missing from our tech stack was a budget for tech, uh, personnel for tech, <laughs> and just a general openness to tech. So, um, so I think it's taken us about five years now, well, three years to start to get it going. Uh, one example of how that manifested in our company was when I got back, uh, the executive team was my dad, um, who was more of a visionary, uh, his broker operator, and his CFO, and that was it. So no marketing, no tech on the management team. You had a heavy lift. Um, so, you know, flat, you know, fast forward to now, uh, we have uh, myself, uh, the successor to the broker operator, our new CFO, our marketing officer, and we just added our tech director to the leadership team. And uh, that has made a huge difference in terms of getting us focused on our technology. So I feel like now that's not missing anymore. Of course, we've budgeted now for technology. And since it's coming down from the top, um, we're able to make these decisions a lot faster to bring on our technology. Uh, we're able to solve problems. We don't have to have conversations uh, without the tech guy being in the room and then wait a week before we can make that decision by bringing, just, just bringing him into the conversation. And our tech guy is more of an IT and systems person, does an excellent job with that. But by adding the combination of our marketing director who's very comfortable with technology, that uh, relationship has really sort of um, given, given a lot of speed into our organization. And like I said, it just really started, but we already are feeling a lot of benefits from that. So that was really what was missing from ours. And I forgot your question now. I, well, I, I, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing that. It's a great, great answer. I've seen that more and more common, uh, like the Group Inc., for example, very influential real uh, leading RE firm. And, and Brandon and Tom uh, you know, kind of took over, came up through the technology ranks, and now Brandon's the president of the Group Inc. So, you know, wonderful human being and technology minded and I think they're they're positioned well you know empowering those technology employees or you know leaders in your firm can go a long ways yeah we always were looking at our org chart and just thinking okay someday tech has got to get to the leadership level and we finally we're just like no we just got to do it let's just put it let's put the person in the room make them part of the conversation and I think that it really is going to make a big difference and you know and, and everyone here knows it's one thing to get your management team focused on tech it's the next question how to get the agent culture into tech because again 76 year old company we have a lot of deep-seated practices and culture uh, we've got the younger agents are more comfortable but the experienced seasoned agents have a tougher time with it but I think again from seeing us on the leadership team focused on it and really making sure we're providing the right support and training when we have tech is helping some of those middle to late adopters start to actually use the technology that we're providing to them. And also we don't, we try to be pretty practical with our tech. We try to bring on technology that is going to make things that they are doing every day easier. Um, I think we're gonna start to do some more interesting stuff now that we've got that wrapped up. But anyways, that's Good. where we are. Good, anybody else have anything to add? Al? I do, I do think it's important um, to your point about the technology leaders. So sometimes um, IT people, technology people get a bad rap for not having the feeling side of the business, I think. So our IT guy has been with us for probably eight to 10 years and we've brought him in on more management meetings so that he can see the problems that we're facing with our agents that have nothing to do with technology. Um, because I do think it's important for them to realize that these agents don't only care about technology. It's easy for any of us to be in our column and feel like only people want to know about marketing that work at, at the company. And that's just not the case. So I think that's a great point to bring them up into those management meetings to, to speak to that. That had nothing to do with the question. No, yeah. I mean, I think if you don't have a tech voice in the in that room, you're going to miss opportunities. Great. 
So Al, let's go to you. The elephant in the room. I'm the elephant this, in the room. You, well, you kind of are. But. <laughs> the elephant in the room is really adoption. You know, will agents use technology? Take us through some of your specific examples and how you're kind of combating that and, and offering the you know innovation that you do. So what's missing in our tech stack is actually adoption. You know, I mean, and and it's we do well with some things and not well with others. And I think that we have. I believe all the best tools in the areas that we need. We have all the people that are here this, this week sponsoring and doing all those things. We just have to get more out of them. We got to squeeze more out of what we're doing. Uh, the one piece we have excellent adoption on, 100%, is SkySlope, transaction management. If, if they want to get paid, the agents want to get paid, they have to fill out a transaction summary. They, and in some cases, the managers might do it for them or they'll have some admins or something, but we have 100% uh, adoption there. It's, it's, it's paperless. Um, it, it, it doesn't feed directly into our accounting system, but it's a lot simpler to get the, get the information in. Uh, the other, but we're trying to drive adoption on um, other tools uh, like you know the property-based CRM, um, which has greatly improved over the last six months, um, and Real Scout, which we rolled out about 16 months ago that has probably pretty high adoption comparatively by uh, bringing it to the agents directly. So we turn over, like most brokerages, about 25% of our agents. And last year, that's about 130 agents. Um, so e with each successive year, there's people that have no experience with not knowing about technology. Every agent that comes in our company gets a one-on-one -on -one for two to three hours with the tech trainers. Um, sometimes it's two-on-one -on -one or whatever, but they go through all of the major pieces of technology and give them a, uh, a sample of it. And then we have these tech checks, we call them, with uh, tech trainers that we've used for those one-on-ones. And they go into the offices, and we run four of them a month at different regional locations. The agents can come and ask any question, technology-based, uh, social media. E a lot of times, it's, how do I use my email properly? But they'll get on Real Scout and show them how to do a certain thing there. So we, we figure we got to go to the agents. Um, they really won't raise their hand and say, I don't know something. When you'll find out they don't know something is when they've left. And they said, well, Conway never taught me anything. So we, we pushed as hard as we can to get them involved. Well, you, you bring up an interesting point, and Vance, kind of to you here, you guys, you guys have embraced this hub or you know, operating platform uh, mentality, and you mentioned two firms that aren't affiliated with property base. And so how important it is for you guys to integrate and to create an ecosystem that can make you know, Al's firm more productive? Well, I mean, obviously, it's it's super important. I think, um, <clears throat> you know, to Al's point, you know, if you look at our transaction management platform, I think we have like ninety four percent adoption rate, right? Because again, if, you, if you're going to get paid, you're going to use it. Uh, and so our, you know, our approach, and I'd say we've we've gotten better at this. I don't think we were great at this a couple of years ago. Um, we've gotten better at figuring out, okay, you know, everything that you do in these systems, it's connected. Right, but a lot of the platforms have not made it easy to get those pieces of data connected. So if a lead's getting generated in Facebook or a lead's getting generated on the website or from Zillow and that feeds in your CRM and you're doing email marketing and that's feeding into your transaction management system, they should own, the lead should be created automatically for them. And all of the stuff that happens, you know, should automatically be feeding those systems. And we as vendors have not been great about letting other vendors touch our systems. Uh, and that's been a big priority for us, not to, not to make it a commercial. Um, but I think, you know, that's part of what we as technologists need to get better at. It's what, you know, brokerages need to be thinking about. Like, am I thinking in a way that empowers, you know, minimum manual activity and a lot of automation, so agents just get the windfall of of the technology I'm spending money. But, but I think that's a good takeaway for the crowd is as you're going through the the, the initial questions to one of those five thousand emails you guys get, you know, like ask them what are they leading our rebrokers? Do you integrate with other? people. That's a big red flag if they say no or they're not willing and you know do your due diligence on that. I think that's a, a huge red flag. Um, and you know that means more agent uh, logins, more things to remember, and then siloed uh, data, which is where our industry really needs to get away from. Um, so how are you guys addressing uh, adoption as a whole and supporting your, your partners in adoption? Yeah, I mean, 
Uh, great question. So, so one of the things that we've been focused on, we, we've kind of revamped what we call our jumpstart onboarding to make it very simple to figure out, okay, what am I going to get and not get when I roll this out? Um, the second thing that we've been doing is spending a lot of time moving a lot of content to very quick videos, right? And there's so many pieces of functionality if you talk about the entire stack of the funnel. Um, it just takes time to get all these videos done. Um, but more what we're finding is the, the actual adoption of these self-help the, the knowledge base and now the videos, you know, it's, it goes right down demographic lines and of the, of the agent participants that use it. And we're seeing, again, as, as more younger people come into the industry, more times the videos are getting clicked, right? So we're, you know, realizing kind of the shift that's happening and trying to make it automated and simple for people to get just-in-time content. Great. Anybody else have anything to add on adoption? No? Great. So let's talk about uh, something that is not on the 80 plus categories like IT, you know, in infrastructure, you know, technology, information technology, of course, is what it stands for. But Al, I'll go into you. You guys put, you, you spend a lot of time and energy on IT. And this kind of dovetails into the next question, too, is like, what do agents need to have in your organization from an IT perspective? And how do you guys combat that and make sure that they're equipped to go out and actually truly be innovative rather than having to figure things out on their own? Yeah. Um it's uh, we're a 63 almost 63 year old company so some of the same things and the biggest challenge is uh unearthing all of the systems that we have and i'm not talking about real estate lead generation tools i'm talking about why is our email not working how come this phone system over here is if it if it dies, it, what are we going to replace it with? We don't have anything. So it's like whack-a-mole. A, a, a problem is solved over here and another one pops up. So trying to kind of uh, bring um, a holistic approach to IT. So we moved to a managed service contract with a real IT company about three or four months. And I say real because prior to that, we had a guy with a small car and a bunch of hard drives <laughs> in a car driving all over Conway country, which isn't very um, easy. And uh, uh, through that process, also bringing um, the entire company on to uh, 365 for email, which has uh, helped us um, tremendously with some of the spam and spoof uh, stuff that we saw, which is ridiculous. And I know everybody's dealing with that all the time. And um, uh, recently renegotiated all contracts for all of our multifunction devices. The agents actually, when we did a survey of all of the brokerage options, number one um, most uh, used tool in the company was our company council. Number two are the multifunction devices. So um, at least our council is valuable. But uh, ahead of marketing and all the technology. So and uh, very soon bringing the entire company onto a voice over IP unified network, um, which the agents will like because they want those calls right to their cell phone. Those are not real estate tools. Those are business operation tools, but with older brokerages, the, and a lot of times this stuff was built like sediment, and, and you yeah. got to just remove it all and get it, <laughs> get it going. So, well, and, and it's starting to blend too, uh, IT and actual technology. And so, uh, I don't know if you guys in the room are aware, but you know, Zoom video conferencing. Everybody knows who they are. You've all been on a Zoom video. They're breaking into real estate too. And so, uh, I know Vance is talking with them at the team. And how do we integrate Zoom in a native capacity? Imagine in a world where you're doing a transaction and your TC could instantly Zoom. Uh, for contract questions with a, with a consumer, or you're, at, you're in a live chat situation on your website, and boom, fire up a, a, a video conferencing um, with the consumer. And so, and, and same thing with voice over IP, and there's a lot of areas where IT is blending into T, and, uh, and we're getting a lot of uh, mixed signals there from what a firm needs to do and what they shouldn't do, and what should we outsource and what shouldn't we. And for the brokers in the room, I know as brokers, we're always, I'm, I'm not the broker, but my broker and, and I talk about this, we're trying to save money too. And these, these uh, actual expenses on the, on the technology side will save us a lot of money. You know, we're going, we're getting rid of all of these phone lines and everything. So um, that, that's another way to look at it positively. Could I add one thing? Absolutely. The IT part. Um, you know, you, we said it's not, you know, the IT, the phones, the email, um, the stability of the communication with the company is not a real estate thing. But uh, what we found actually, we did a survey, like a, an agent satisfaction survey this year where we look, we surveyed them on the five different departments, marketing, um, the accounting, the brokerage, uh, the IT technology, and then the ownership. And uh, the highest marks that we got were actually in the IT department. And I think, you know, 
can't say this with 100% certainty, but I really think that our agency um, having in-house IT person who can support them on their hardware and software and that kind of things is one of the greatest values that we bring to them as agents. So I think by having a strong uh, department in that way, it becomes a really good retention tool for us. And when we're recruiting agents, it's one of the big things that we talk about. And I think it is something that really is important. So I think that there's a big benefit there if you really have that right. But you know, the person, like you mentioned, has to be someone who can work with agents. I mean, and they're out there. I mean, they're, they're really great technologists who also are great with the agents. We're lucky to have had one for 15 years now. And it wow. makes a big strength for our organization. Megan, how about you? Would, uh, kind of in a similar capacity, marketing and technology are almost in indistinguishable these days. And you guys are, you know, you got awarded for some marketing-related stuff. So how are you guys kind of uh, exploiting that or taking advantage of your marketing prowess and, and using technology in that? Within our firm? Yeah. Within our agents? Yeah. Yeah, I think one of the biggest um, frustrations for me, and I'm sure most of you in this room, is when our agents come to us after they've been with us for six years and say, I didn't know that you guys offered this. I didn't know that you did that. Someone told me that you make feature sheets. I didn't know that. Um, and, and you kind of want to say, where do you think 200 people are getting feature sheets from? They're not making them on their own in Canva. <laughs> um, so, so that's a frustrating piece for me. So we've had a lot of success recently with pretty much just irritating them, right? So we've got kind of what you said, so the tech meetups in the offices. Um, we're constantly doing training, and that's a lot of manpower. It's a lot of time away from your desk and a lot of time away from answering emails that you end up doing at night. But I do really believe, especially if you've got a lot of offices, if you're not in those offices in front of them saying, oh, you missed this training, we'll be back next week, um, they're not going to really embrace what technology changes or offerings you have. And then on the marketing side, kind of the same thing. <clears throat> the worst thing to see is someone post something on social media that's just horrible, um, and it's because they didn't want to bother you. I mean, who hates that, right? You're so busy, I don't want to bother you. Um, well, it looks horrible, so I'd, I'd prefer you to bother me um, so that we can represent your brand, which represents our brand, um, which everyone benefits from. So I think, you know, again, to the point of do you email, do you text, do you put it in their mailboxes, we kind of do a combination of all of them um, just to try to make sure that everyone remembers. But the training is a huge thing, and, and it's as simple as how do I set up a Facebook business page, you know, I mean, where you have all different levels of, of that. And, and Tom, to you uh, too, because you guys have a wonderful brand, beautiful, you know, branding and everything like that. Um, you've brought that to the firm in the last couple of years, and I've been along for the ride and been able to see that. And I know technology plays a part in, in propagating that brand, getting it out there. Um, so, you know, take it from the marketing standpoint of how you guys leverage technology to make sure that your brand is getting exposed in a uh, in a world class fashion. Um, well. Um probably the least techie thing that we do in terms of our brand is our magazine, um, which we've published for about 25 years, which, um, again, is one of the big uniques that we have, unique value propositions we have to bring agents on board. But uh, one of the things that we've done in the past couple of years is uh, re reuse that content from the magazine in a digital space. So uh, we created an online magazine that Van <laughs> when Vance came on board, he was very helpful in in helping us create this thing, which was definitely not part of their offering, so maybe I shouldn't bring it up right now. But uh, <laughs> anybody but want a it, magazine product? Yeah, Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the but the online version of the magazine um, connects to the real estate website, um, so it's supposed to be a funnel to the real estate site. So everything about that is supposed to, of course, be. If not getting them there today, keeping them there until they're ready, and then you know, so we'll put listings within articles or all over the website, so people can easily find opportunities to click over to the real estate site, and that's just one of the ways that we have used. Yeah, I think we have used technology to um, take something that take part of our brand that's always been there, that has been had, that has set us apart, and uh, get it out to a wider audience, and then of course from there we're using the content in emails and on social media and encouraging the agents to, to post from the online magazine onto their po post because you know they're always looking for content and that kind of thing. So I think that's been one of the great ways and uh, on, on the property-based system that, that has worked so really well. So. I think it was great because you took a traditional strategy you've been doing for a long time and you thought you know digital first or innova innovation first. And you're like a lot of people think mobile first these days, but when I mean, a lot of real estate companies are creating excellent content. Um, I know some firms in Denver that are just mapping out every neighborhood on a micro level and putting so much energy into it, then they throw it online in a PDF. 
It's like, you know, they, they, don't, they don't think about how do we maximize the content that we are producing, our local knowledge, and imagine the value that you can create from an organic search engine optimization perspective and just, just value in general uh, for your whole company and your, and your market. So I think content marketing is, is, is a big part of that. And, and people just think a little too narrow and don't think about their technology partner who's willing and able to help you be productive. And that's a you know, wonderful testament to property base, of course, but I think it's good for your... Uh, for you guys as well. Well, and yes, you were helpful in getting us sort of jump started. So yeah. thank you for that. Thank you. <laughs> um, all right, so let's go to Sarah. Uh, let's talk about agents, new agents, uh, new recruits to your firm. You know, what are you seeing as far as like minimum standards of technical proficiency? Um, what do they need to have? What are they coming in with? And is it a problem? Is it an issue? And how are you addressing it? We have no problems. Um, no, uh, our firm, um, we're smaller. We've got, uh, we're 30, we're still in our thirties, but, um, I remember when there was, you know, no, gosh, it was fax and fax and phone when I started scan to email. I mean, it's just only grown from there. And so you're always going to have new technology coming your way with, with agents and with, um, people coming in and out needing to be retained. We have a very high retention rate at our firm. Um, it comes with meeting directly with the agents um, regularly. Uh, when someone new comes on board, we really take the time to sit down and understand how they've built their business, their network, what they what they can leverage. Um, and instead of offering them, you know, dozens of tools, um, I consider it like a menu, like you go to Cheesecake Factory, and it's like a novel, and it's overwhelming. And what do I want to eat? And then you know, or you go to a, a you know, chef one restaurant where they have this one page of something gorgeous, and you know exactly what you want to do. So we really call that down for every single agent that comes into our firm, whether they're brand new um, or very experienced, and make sure we're training them on the tools that they are going to be capable of succeeding at and not setting them up to feel overwhelmed or that they're not good enough um, or giving them enough to chew on to where they stay truly integrated with a platform um, like property base or anything else. Um, I will say as far as agents and the minimum standards and what they can expect, the big thing we do uh, do is make sure they're willing to invest in the right uh, systems, the laptop. They can't come in with a dinosaur laptop and expect our technology to run like it's supposed to and integrate with all our systems. Um, if they have their, you know, archaic BlackBerry, I'm sorry if someone has one, um, but as far as what they, what they pull out um, and put on the table, we work with our IT staff um, to be sure they have that handhold to go, okay, this is the system you're on. This is what you can expect it to do. Upgrade this, do this, do that. And we do really have a high expectation of what their investment in their platforms need to be in order to harness that. Um, the other thing is, I know um, they mentioned this too, is having that support system with your services that they have that person to call. It's not a, you know, I mean, we still have email systems, help me and support ads and things like that. But um, a human that is at our firm that understands exactly what this piece of technology does and how we get our message out to the clients, to the agents, um, that they have someone to fall back on to go, okay, wait, how do I load my database? What do I do next? Um, and we really try to say there is no stupid question you can ask. Um, please come. I mean, you know, it's like, have you, you know, I know with Real Scout, we launched that about a year ago and it was like, I've had all these January meetings and you know, I kind of start out, hey, if you haven't logged in, added a client, or are you using it regularly, just, you know, there's no wrong answer, but I just, I want to know. And I think creating that open space to be a goofball and you've never touched it or you're very savvy, but to, to start somewhere. And I think no matter what age you are, uh, you have a certain level of comfortability that doesn't matter if you're, you know, 50-something 20 something there's all there's there's all sorts of levels to in, that you have to address as your brokerage in order to make people feel that your technology is is worth their time and energy because you are spending gobs of money on it and you want them to utilize it yeah so you take a more prescriptive approach even in your onboarding too you sit down is that like an active conversation that you have with new agents new recruits yes and it's not really it's mostly listening um, lots of questions about you know what 
what do you see your business growing? How do you think, uh, you know, what, what are you comfortable with using? Is it this email campaigns? Is it online? Are you very active in social media? But listening to where they are in the space currently in order to understand where we can take them next. Um, you don't want to sit there and have someone that hasn't ever had a database and start talking about how elaborate your CRM system <laughs> is and all it's going to do. It's changing their whole sure. way of life. Um, but at the same time, um, you have to speak to both. So. And I've seen far too many onboarding processes that literally just glance right over that. Mm-hmm. You know, let's jump right into what we yeah. offer you. And Let it's, me just talk at you. It's like, wait a minute, do you even have a phone? Yeah, and it is, <laughs> right? it's, a, it's an opportunity to keep building the relationship that you have with your agents. And they feel that trust is there. And I think when they're getting recruited and their, uh, you know, new members are entering the Austin market every day with a, you know, tech savvy brokerage or whatever it is, um, Trust is a huge factor of how they're going to adopt this technology in order to grow their business, and it's very personal. So, gotcha. Uh, let's do. A, uh, let's go to what's the what's the number one technology process or solution that you guys have implemented that has transformed your business in the last two years? Um, Sarah, you can start, and we'll go down. We'll end with Vance too. Can we start? Okay. Um, For us, I think we added this past, it was a year and a half ago, um, someone that strictly generates content that's company, like Moreland branded content about our listings, uh, area uh, specific content, um, things that are going to be really relational for our agents to then push out themselves. We tried some third parties where, you know, you got to change your refrigerator coils or, you know, things that just did not land well with our clients. And so we really took that back in house and um, it's a simple thing. It's not very tech savvy, but having someone writing that content for our entire firm and uh, an agent can utilize that for a property description, anything else like that. But I think adding that piece was was well received. Great. Um, it's not a technology tool, but a process. Through our new email, we really had to go right to the agents to show them how to use it. We had a lot of people uncomfortable with the new email system. So we created a tech team, an onboard, a tech, we called it the email rollout team. But from that, that tech team grew. And um, these, these people, uh, like I said, they meet in the offices with the agents and regional setups and they'll answer any question. I think it really is gonna drive adoption on a lot of stuff we already have. They're a great group to run ideas by. Uh, does this work? Do you think the people can, to, can do this? Uh, there's, a, there's another hidden bonus in there is that uh, we're always looking, occasionally looking, I should say, for staff people. And these people, are, these are agents, so they're, they're being paid part-time salaries, but they're also selling. So it gives us a chance to kind of test drive whether they could be on staff, whether they might be on staff, possible managers. Managers are the hardest people to find in our business that are real good managers. So these guys, uh, we've already had one ascend to a management position. So this is a great opportunity for us to move our tech things forward, but just kind of, I think, modernize the way the training is done. It's, it's really one-on-one, like you were talking about, especially especially the onboarding process and uh, just very high touch. Um, so I'd say the thing that's made the biggest impact on our organization this past year is um, we didn't have a very good uh, strategy for generating leads on our website um, going back until about three years ago. Um, and this is Travis when you helped us was when we finally made the decision to um, just get rid of our old old fashioned website. Um, and try to get something that was mobile friendly. And we did it and uh, uh, we kind of screwed it up actually. It's not, not you at all. <laughs> so uh, we made some mistakes. We actually saw our traffic uh, drop on our website like by almost half. It was terrible. And we saw our leads go down. Um, and then, and this is going to sound, you know, this is really have a lot to, th- to thank uh, Vance and Property Base here. When we made the switch to Property Base, got off our old platform um, and made some tweaks to our site to generate, keep people on our site longer and give them a lot more opportunities to create a lead, we saw our leads triple through our website. 
um, almost immediately. And now we're, we are rebuilding that lost traffic. I think we just really screwed up when we made this one change and made our website not very enjoyable to, for, to stay on. And so that made a huge difference. And actually having a strategy in that and getting the site built out properly with the correct landing pages has now allowed us to budget or for paid click ads and do a lot of other um, just lead generation things. You know, I'm not. I'm not the obviously the marketing and tech person, so I'm <laughs> going to miss some of the lingo here. But it saw our leads triple, and it keeps going up. And of course, the agents are happy about that. And so that was that was a big deal for us. Great. Yeah, we launched the CRM last summer, and so that was the first company CRM we ever had. So 43 years into the business, and we were using an Excel spreadsheet. So you can imagine what that did for our business as a whole. Um, and then from the agent perspective, having a CRM that we have kind of an in-house cheerleader for and, and counsel that they can come to has made us extremely valuable to the agent. So not only are we providing this free CRM for them so they can save dollars, they also have somebody that they can ask questions. We were providing content for um, their drip marketing. So again, it's making making us um, retain or embrace, whatever the right word is these days, um, these agents in this competitive market. And then to the point of kind of vetting it out, you know, we have an advisory board. Um, and purposely, we don't have our top agents on that advisory board, but we try to have a well-rounded mix from all offices, older agents, younger agents, um, and really get a good feel for what they're embracing, what they're not embracing, what we're doing, what we're not doing well. Because I think at the end of the day, you can have all this technology, but if you skip ahead and think that they're using it for 10 different things and they haven't put the database in yet, um, you know, it's, it's not effective for the company. Great. Vance, what's the, what's the one thing you've done in the last 13 months in your real, real estate tenure that's been the biggest success? I'll give you two. So one is uh, just putting together what we call like an operating rhythm. Basically, when we, we bring, especially in the sales department, we bring a new person on board, like here's the expectation week one, here's the expectation the first month, here's the expectation in the first 60 days. So the managers know exactly you know, what's, ex what's expected of them as a manager and what's expected of the new salesperson coming on board. So we can quickly correct course, uh, everything from what tools they're using, you know, how they're making calls. So it's very structured so they don't feel like they're left to the wolves. Um, and then on the technology side, you know, um, so we put in Slack, right? So, you know, every Silicon Valley company I've worked with uses Slack. It's unbelievably cheap. You'd be surprised if you don't use it. Um, and having, you know, now like eight offices in multiple continents, um, it totally increases the productivity because people can just, to everybody, send in our general message boards a simple question like, hey, how do I use Chatter? And boom, you get seven people replying within 30 seconds or a minute. So Nice. I actually, I like Slack too from even a multi-company approach, especially you guys. You, you do kind of have multi-companies, at least they were born that way, and then they, you're rolling them into one. But even for real estate firms, when you're working with mortgage and title and ancillary partners, um, Slack's a great tool that you can add someone else's workspace into your channel. So like I have a bunch of tech partners that I work with, property base being one of them. I have Slack channels for each of them so I can see instead of sending emails back and forth between multiple companies and waiting, you know, sometimes days, I just ping them in Slack and I hop right into their, you know, their environment that they're that's native to them and I'm literally with like I'm in their organization. It's it's pretty neat. Yeah, and just to follow up something Al said earlier, this it probably takes away from you know what I'm trying to accomplish. But the you know, the the technology out there with cloud and modern technology in the last five years has there's so much of it. It's so competitive. Prices have come down so significantly that you can end up saving a lot of money just by bringing in these new technologies and increase the productivity of your staff. Very good. Any questions for anybody? Could you repeat the one they asked? Oh, sure. Yes, Melody. With the different technologies that you offer to your agents, is there a level of, beyond just the technology team, and office staff support that's happening among like just admins in your office who are additionally providing any support or using some of the technology on behalf of your agents in some instances? That's a good question. Um, so staff support, but also, you know, like, uh, uh, marketing coordinators and you know technology coordinators and that kind of thing. Any of you guys tackle that? I mean, I can answer. I know uh, we have a marketing piece that our our mar our technical marketing person has templates that they will do for the agents that they have access to at all times, but they customize them all the time. Uh, there's a lot of hand-holding when it comes to the look and feel of those pieces that we do in-house for them. Um, maybe some others could speak to. That's a, that's a real big uh, challenge. 
Um, that's why we created the tech team. This may sound harsh, I'm not a harsh person, but I've found that the, the problem with the modern managers that we have, uh, the one area they really lack is in, in technology. They, they tend to be, um, I think Matt Ferrar used the word seasoned agents or seasoned managers. So uh, they're willing to learn, but they're not necessarily the greatest at training. It's not all of them, but we would hope that it's the admins. We have 10 admins, 19 managers um, that would help with that. But uh, we're, we're still trying to figure that out. But that's why we rolled out this team, because we knew these folks were really good at it, really passionate about it, and match our culture of you know wanting to be um, nurturing while still teaching and making sure they get get all they need to learn. Um, we, we try to train our admins team before we start training the agents so that we know that, w that when the agents need something like two minutes ago, they're not going to wait to find the tech person. They're going to go r straight to the admin who they're most comfortable with. And that certainly eases a little bit of the pressure. And uh, this is sort of related. One of the other things we do is we have structured trainings, you know, whether it's on the CRM or email marketing or whatever. But uh, usually once a month, uh, we'll just have an open workshop where we invite the agents to come with their laptop. And um, we'll have both of our tech people there answering questions. And the agents seem to really enjoy that. Uh, they don't really like the formal trainings where we tell them what steps to go in. So that's, been a, that's, that's helped us, though, get more adoption. Yeah, and I feel like if you bring your admin people in ahead of bringing your agents in and get their buy-in, then they feel a, a bigger part and that integral piece, and, and you really lavish them with the, the wording of, you know, you're going to be what makes this work for our agents. Um, and, and they are to an extent, but um, they, they have a lot more buy-in. And then from the manager standpoint, you want to educate to the point that they're dangerous, but then I always have a cutoff. I'm like, if it gets to this part of the conversation, turn it over to me. Don't continue down because then I have to swoop and be the bad guy and say, we don't actually do that. The CRM does not provide you that. Um, and, and that's never a good place to be. Vance, let me get your thoughts on disruption. Because uh, disruption is all around us. It's an overused word. There's a lot of competitors. I know Al's probably in the most competitive market, not necessarily from a technology standpoint, but from sheer size. Um, and then Sarah's probably next. But you guys, how are you helping these guys combat, combat the disruption? There's a lot of noise, the compasses that are out there, you know, come in with flashy money and stuff like that, but really not a lot under the hood. And so how do you make sure that you know, this day and age, your clients, many on this panel here and many in the room, are, are empowered to be able to go out and combat that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a hard question, to be honest. Uh, I'd say we've done an average job at it. I mean, uh, it's something we could do a better job at. Um, I think there's two things that I've been trying to do, and I, it's been more one-on-one. -on -one. Like, I get the question, I get a question a lot of the time uh, about, you know, what do you think about Compass, or what do you think about Redfin, and what do you think about, you know, X, Y, and Z? Um, and just, how you know, my experience having been at, in, in these tech companies and how, you know, venture capital works and all that stuff, you know, the vast majority, you know, take a Compass, for example, great company selling a lot of great stuff. You know, the reality is there, there are a ton of companies that, you know, when they go public are worth, you know, a fair amount less than their last valuation. So I think, you know, they're doing the industry a lot of disservice in trying to educate all these agents that, you know, they're going to get this great opportunity with this great upside and all this great technology. Um, and the reality is that's just not the case. You're not getting what you think you're going to get. Um, I think the second thing, you know, to think about, we've just been trying, I get the question a lot about, hey, help me arm you know, my managers with talking points because I'm getting recruited against, right? And so we've been trying to put together just one pagers and sit down and have phone conversations with folks to say, you know, here are the five key pieces of technology that they have today. They may, may not even know it. Um, and for example, we have a handful of teams on our platform that are Compass teams, right? Because our technology is still so far ahead of where, for example, a Compass is. Um, and so, yeah. And so we, yeah. so we just we try to educate. Again, I think we could do a lot better job of it, and I'm realizing it. Um, but that's that's what we're trying to do. Great, gotcha. Now, we're we're competing with that on culture. That I mean, one of the things I was going to suggest is when you're looking at technology that it matches up with your culture. That that's the most, at least for us, that's the most important thing. And it's true. It, we're not the greatest technology real estate company, and we don't pay the highest splits. But we do feel that we take the best care of our agents, and we have the best place to work. And 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 um, you know that's 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 been going on for sixty years plus years. Well, and and I think that's a common 
uh, sentiment throughout real estate is the shiny penny syndrome has probably never been stronger. And a lot of brokers will be like, I need lead generation. There's firms that are doing crazy lead generation and killing it. Or, you know, you got the op cities and the agentologies getting these, you know, mega valuations and stuff like that. Yet, in reality, we know 90% of the business comes from the sphere, yet who's focusing on the sphere? And so I understand you, you know, like a company like Property Base needs to have, uh, you know, to appeal to many different types of personas and brokers, but it's, it's the same thing for you guys. You know, don't go outside of your comfort zone and, uh, and you know, go do something crazy just because, you know, EXP is doing it or whatever. You know, we don't, we don't have Compass in our market, but we do have some satellite offices from larger companies who are competing against us. So with this actually doesn't come up that much with the technology because where we are, it's just not the primary, um, it's not the priority for most agents. But when it does come up, going back to the IT services, um, we make sure we talk a lot about how we have the people on, st on, uh, on the ground who can help them if their computer goes out and you're working in one of these satellite offices where they don't have any support around, it's going to be a half a day or a full day. Maybe they're going to have to pay somebody $120, $150 an hour to get it fixed. If it's us, they can you know, walk two minutes over to the desk and get it going. And, uh, and that, that, that's one of the ways that we kind of flip that. Great. Any last questions? Um, I'd be interested to hear what each of you think uh, is the main technology, technology challenge Kind of coming here for the future, like if you see one big tech challenge. Great. So what? Yeah. What is one big tech challenge? Rapid fire. We'll go across. Let's start at Megan. We'll end with Vance, and we'll wrap it up. <laughs> Sign me up for this, Cade. Uh, adoption. I mean, I, that's not really the best answer, but for us, I mean, we can bring on um, technology every day, but it's adoption, right? Um, I think it's just really trying to figure out a way to jazz things up and keep people after they adopt it continuing to use it. That's where my biggest fear is for the next probably two to three years is you've adopted it, but then are you going to stop using it? I think ours is making sure we're not putting, giving them too much too fast and letting them digest it and start to use it and making sure the things are working together. I'll take it from a different side is uh, controlling the costs of it, keeping the costs certain so that we can plan. But Similar to adoption, and more I would say training, making sure that we're making ourselves available because I do think there are agents out there that want to use things and they're just not able to do it yet, so. Yeah, I mean, I would say adding the next thing, which is always going to happen for all of us, how to support that next thing, just as well as we're supporting all things we have with the, you know, like you said, the funds of everything, you've got to really manage what you're spending on all that. So I think that's, that's the biggest challenge for us. Uh, just coming out of left field. I mean, we generate millions of leads on Facebook. Uh, and, you know, just trying to figure out the impact of data privacy, Facebook is constantly trying to change what they're doing. And so for us to stay ahead of that uh, and still keep the lead cost under $10 is, you know, it's a lot of work. And that's where we're, we're spending a lot of time focused. Great. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Appreciate it.